Today's video is probably going to be a controversial one. And it's funny because it was actually inspired by my trip to my wardrobe to find a pyjama top because <laughs> it's quite cold in the UK at the moment. Um, and when I went there, I found a top that I hadn't seen for a very long time from many years ago. And it just sparked a lot of uh, questions, discussion in my mind. And so I actually decided to wear this top <laughs> for this video um, just because it is indeed the topic of this video and that is fake luxury goods. And in case you haven't worked out by me wearing this top and talking about this top, this top is a fake top. This particular t-shirt is a replica of the LV, so the Louis Vuitton and Supreme collaboration, which was maybe like two or three years ago. It was a very successful collaboration. I remember actually myself queuing to get some items, didn't really work. It was a bit of like a, it was a bit of a mess to be honest. Like there was a lot of people shoving and it was kind of like a bit of a riot really. Um, people trying to like fight people. But that aside, failed miserably, but then also realized that a lot of these items were not worth the money. And I realized how shocking, controversial this is, given that my channel is about authentic luxury goods. Uh, but I would be lying as would many people to say that there has not been one single fake in my wardrobe. A lot of people have encountered fakes, whether that been actively or unconsciously, really. Obviously, I agree absolutely that luxury should be bought authentic, but I do think it's important that um, a different perspective is offered. But before you go out with your pitchforks, I urge you to please listen to some of the content of this video first. So I'd like to start by giving you guys a little bit of insight into my background. I don't think anyone of um, Oriental ethnicity has talked about this before. At least I haven't seen it. So if you know of any creators that have talked about this, please link them below for me as well so I can go check that out. In summary, I am of Chinese descent. My parents were immigrants to this country and I was born in this country, but I, I had um, upbringings in both. So actually I had a stint of time in Wuhan, which nowadays we all know to be the epicenter of the world going to utter crap right now, but we shan't talk about that. I by no means had a super bougie upbringing, which might surprise some of you, I'm not sure, but as I've gone into uh, further in life, into my career, obviously become very fortunately much more comfortable and able to, you know, buy the things that I've always wanted in life, which I never had when I was younger. And I feel like for the majority of people who are kind of middle class, luxury when you're younger is very uncommon unless you are part of the super rich. I feel like at some point in everybody's upbringing, there is an exposure, whether it's direct or inadvertent to the fakes industry. And I think by my culture, it's just something that I got exposed to, not necessarily at a young age, but I think it's part of Chinese society because obviously China's economy is fueled on manufacturing and manufacturing is cheap there. It's done more efficiently there. There's a lot of manpower, obviously. The population is huge. Then you go to Western countries, you export your goods there. The customer at the end of the day is very happy because the product is of good quality or good enough quality. It's cheap and it's there fast. With that said, you know, I, I know a lot of people, not necessarily within my family, but Everyone knows as somebody who works in the manufacturing industry and it's honestly their bread and butter. I think, I mean, I'm not by any means um, getting into a debate around <laughs> labor regulations or human rights and all that sort of stuff. We know it's not great. Growing up, these designer brands, I never really um, saw or knew too much about them. In fact, surprisingly, I was never really into fashion like I am now. I know it's a bit of a shock. It certainly shocked a lot of my friends who've grown up with me. I, I always loved um, dressing well and looking good, but I never really had a fascination with designer brands until I grew up and then my mum got me kind of into it and it's kind of her fault. But that aside, uh, I would go between the UK and China a lot. But in doing so, a lot of things ended up happening where uh, relatives or friends would buy 
presents and people would go and buy you a nice t-shirt but you read it as a child you're like oh it's like says gucci or something but you didn't know what gucci was so you just wore it because you're a kid and what do you know and then i remember distinctly the first time i was acutely aware of designer brands was we went to this um chinese department store if you've been to china you'll know the department stores are crazy you can barter for stuff and i remember i needed a belt and I don't really thought about what belt, it just needed to be a good durable leather belt or something. And then I remember, was it my my parents or was it like family friends took us to the store and I got a D&G belt. <laughs> and I didn't really know what D&G meant because I was probably nine years old or 10 years old, but it was so cheap and I just needed a belt that it would do. And it's so normal in China, like no one even calls them fakes because you can just... They look, they look like department stores, like a Harvey Nichols or a Selfridges. You really wouldn't be able to tell. And I remember being fascinated by this belt. It was like my favorite belt for a long time. Couldn't really put my finger on the fact that it was fake. But then, you know, people would then over the years buy some gifts. Like I remember I got a fake Chanel bag once, but I didn't realize it was Chanel because I didn't really know about Chanel. And I would just wear it out after school and stuff. And I'd trash the bag and not really knowing that it was meant to be of any inherent value. But then I suddenly got more into fashion, going into my teenage years, learned a lot more about brands. Then, you know, through university as well, you know, started earning money, then obviously getting into the corporate ladder. My cost of living kind of went up and my taste for good things uh, while working very hard also went up. So, you know, fast forward to now, obviously things are very, very different. But having said that, I wouldn't be where I am right now if it wasn't for the experiences I've had in the past. So I kind of wanted to show you guys some of the fake items I've been given slash bought. Like, hands up, I, I had Asia trips uh, in the past like two years, three years, where I bought a couple of small items. I know some of you won't matter if it's small or not, but I think I, it's a distinction worth making. I don't buy like fake bags, shoes and things like that. And so the first thing I will show you, some of you Chanel lovers out there will know exactly what this is a replica of. It is the perfume Monodier. It just sits on one of my back tables and it's more of a display at the moment. I would never wear this out. Also because it's not practical. But yeah, it's just a Perspex bag or structure it's got basically plastic interior and it's got a chain which you can wear as a bag and that's pretty much it the authentic one i think probably went for like five or six grand they're always price and request i find and i was then even more shocked when i got it as a gift because i was like oh my god this is incredible that i've got one now but then obviously i've done like more research over the years around chanel Gradually, I think being able to earn some money, it just didn't sit as well with me as when I once thought had these kind of items given to me. It's just fast fashion really at that age. And you know, you're very careless as well. So even having nice stuff, it would be a bit of a waste. I feel like that's more the time where I could almost comprehend why people would buy into fakes, but also because it is so, I feel obviously fake. I mean, there's you know, it's not the greatest quality. I don't know, maybe it's very similar to the Mono Diaz. I've never gotten one. You must tell me if you've got one. Um, but I feel like a lot of things are very telltale. I mean, the Perspex looks very cheap and the strap as well. Okay, from far away, maybe you can't tell. But I then started realizing actually that being a woman of color, especially being someone from Chinese heritage and, you know, stuff being made in China, even nowadays, people ask me if my stuff's real. Then I'll talk about the top that I'm wearing, which I believe was from three or four years back. Must have been Shenzhen or something. Um, I just, I thought it'd be funny at the time to buy the shirt that I just couldn't get at the authentic launch back in London. So I bought this, I think it probably cost about five or 10 pounds. And to be quite honest with you, I just wanted to experiment with my bartering skills and it turned out pretty cheap. And then the other item that I want to quickly show you and talk about is along the same lines of this supreme theme. And I don't necessarily think it counts as a luxury item, 
but because Supreme is so big at the moment, you can almost put it in that same echelon. But it's this Supreme bum bag, which some of you guys out there might not be super aware of, but if you are anything like me and you like streetwear, then this is something that you might have seen a lot before because it's quite well known, quite sought after. And, you know, I have tried many times to get the real thing. It's always hundreds of pounds marked up over the actual price, despite it actually being made in China. When I saw this, I was a bit morally conflicted because obviously, you know me, I like the real deal. Uh, but with streetwear, I kind of thought, you know what? It's actually all made in China anyway. So let me just have a look and see what the quality is like. And let me see just what the price is like, because I've seen it online and I'm curious. The market was interesting because it was all kind of laid out in rows in uh, Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur. And it was near the Chinatown, if you've been there, you'll know. And there are some shops which are actually proper shops. They accept cards, they accept all kinds of cards actually, not just cash. And it's really quite remarkable. And I've seen a lot of YouTube videos as well of people buying these fakes in these markets. It's a lot more organized, I feel, than you know, the ones where you get on Alibaba or even people posting. And this is the worst, actually, people posting on eBay and things like, or like Vestier, and they're actually fake items, but they're selling them for real. At least with these markets, they're not trying to fool you or anything. Obviously, they give you a bit of spiel, but no one's making any secrets about the fact that the items are indeed fake. I remember going to the shop and this was hung up quite neatly as well next to all these other Supreme bags. I remember just looking at it, checking out all the details, and I'm not sure, you know, maybe if you want to authenticate this for me now and just see how close it is to the original, you can let me know, but I remember looking at all the pictures and this was so close to the real deal, I couldn't even tell. And the quality of this is actually quite good. Almost identical in my opinion. And you know, th they even have all the little small accents, like, you know, the, the Supreme here, they've got all the writing on the side and everything. I started using it, wearing it out sporadically. And obviously being in Asia, wearing this out, it's no one can tell if it's real or fake because chances are everything is fake that everyone's wearing out there. Obviously it did make me mindful that of course there was benefits financially mostly because it was dirt cheap. I bought it for about, I want to say like 15 or 20 pounds. I did obviously wonder, you know, wearing it out and about in the Western countries, you know, I did hesitate. I feel a lot more comfortable wearing my actual authentic stuff, although that has security implications in itself, but it's just not the same feeling that you get, I guess, from buying the real deal. Those were kind of the initial thoughts that I had really when I was going through my wardrobe and finding these items. But I guess what I want to do now is talk a little bit around the critique that I imagine some people might make or some of the questions that people might ask. The first thing that I think is probably worth clearing up is, you know, potentially you might be thinking, well, why did you buy this stuff anyway? When you buy the real bags, like your real Chanel bags, Saint Laurent, etc., why did you buy them anyway? And I think the only reason that I can give you that you guys might understand is just curiosity. So the fakes market in Chinese culture is very, very much a norm, which is very hard to, I think, understand for maybe the Western audiences. But growing up, you know, people would gift each other these kinds of things and people wouldn't know if they're real or not. But I never really got to understand how big of a deal it was until being totally engrossed in, you know, the UK's uh, upbringing and the cultural norms. Did I come to realize it? But then even with that in mind, going to these countries and wanting to do, you know, when in Rome, you know, that kind of lifestyle. I wanted to be t given an open mind to these markets. I wanted to see how they were run. And not all of it is criminal, mafia related or, or, or drug trafficking cover-ups, you know. And it's not a pleasant truth, but it provides everybody there, that huge population with jobs. So these luxury goods are part of these local economies. I wanted to see what all the fuss was about. I had, I wanted to try my hand at bartering for a very, very long time. Being totally honest with you, I enjoyed bartering. I enjoyed the thrill of getting a good deal. And a lot of stuff that you can buy there is like phone cases and, you know, stuff that's not necessarily fake. So I bought a few of those. Or I did draw a line mentally. I was not going to buy luxury bags, name brand bags, name brand shoes, etc. I mean, these things with shoes in particular, I definitely would never buy fakes because they just fall apart and... 
you know, it's quite important that your shoes stay on your feet. But obviously having these goods, knowing the quality, the satisfaction as well, it's just, I knew it was never going to feel the same. And I remember seeing these particular bag shops thinking, actually, what is the point? Because especially at where I'm at a point in life where I can afford to get the real thing, why would I get the fake one? So it's only really in the event of this t-shirt, for example, or this bum bag where I couldn't get them in real life. They are very cheap to make. And I wouldn't be ashamed to tell people that it's fake either because to be honest with Supreme, everything's made in China. You wouldn't really know either way if it was real or fake or not. So it's not really luxury that I would be buying fakes of, but obviously those are just personal preferences. I know that's not easy for some people out there and maybe the fakes is something that will do. So another point that you guys might be wondering about is, you know, Mel, aren't you cognizant of the harm that the fakes industry is having on the labor involved? And obviously with a lot of these countries that are involved, they are third world countries. The cost of labor is obviously going to be a lot lower than in the Western world, the first world. And that is unfortunately the hard truth around why a lot of things are made in China. 90% of stuff that we do get is made in China because it's able to be made cheaply, efficiently, quickly. So obviously I do have a concern for the harm that it's doing for the laborers involved, the dire working conditions, the low pay. In the same vein, and this is by no means defending the uh, fakes industry, I do think if, if people are coming from the point of labor regulations or working conditions, that sort of thing, I think this, is, this should be a lot more far sweeping than just the fakes industry, because a lot of these same warehouses, manufacturing plants will make other things. In fact, a lot of these places will probably make the luxury goods that are actually authentic and they will still be able to label it made in France, made in Italy, um, because a certain percentage of items are made in that actual originating country and then the rest is finished elsewhere. Alternatively, they could also get uh, immigrant workers from these third world countries to come into France, uh, Italy, etc. to make their products and the conditions may also be dire and that's the actual real deal. Similarly, you have your uh, high street brands, your Primarks, even your online e-commerce brands, your misguided, your boohoos, your pretty little things. They are very cheap for a reason and I think there's an element of like blissful ignorance or like selective hearing when it comes to issues like this because I absolutely agree in terms of the human rights a component and you know labor regulations they all need to be up to scratch there is probably an element of blissful ignorance that we are privileged in the western world to have when you really should be applying this kind of statement across all walks of life across everything that you buy because things are only cheap or on sale or discounted if the price of labor is cheap. That's just how it works, that's supply chain. This is an issue in wider society and that's why I don't try and buy into fast fashion anymore. I buy investment pieces because like I mentioned, probably like 90% of the stuff that we buy is still made in China, regardless of you know being in the fakes industry or not. Now another question some of you might be having is, Mel, don't you realize the damage that you are potentially doing to the actual luxury brands themselves. As someone who has spent a lot of money on the real deal for stuff, I would hate for people to think it's fake. Not that I should care about what other people think, but you know, it's, I guess you bought the status symbol, you know, let, let's be true, let's call a spade a spade here. It's the status symbol and the prestige of getting the real deal. Unless people are trying to steal my bag, then it's fake, then it's totally fake. I do realize that has a knock on impact into when I wear my goods, it's very frustrating and it's very, very annoying when, you know, I had to pay X amount of money for a Chanel bag when someone else paid maybe a hundred, 200 pounds for something that looks almost identical. Obviously think it creates an issue around authenticity, which I've seen a lot of people online have experienced, which is super unfortunate. At the same time though, in the same vein as the point I made around concerns for the laborers. I think people must also understand that the luxury brands themselves are also using third world country immigrants as their laborers because that increases their margin, they make more money. But then when you consider things like dupes or inspired by pieces, for example, when the Bottega Veneta, those puffy shoes, those mules came out, 
I mean, that went crazy on the internet. Everybody wanted them and a lot of dupes came out. And in fact, I saw a lot of luxury bloggers go ahead and promote dupes. And when I say dupes, I think dupes is like a, almost like a terminology to say something that is very, very, very similar, but not masquerading to be the same thing or a replica or a fake. But I even saw luxury bloggers, having said that, promoting what were essentially fakes, but passing them off as dupes or inspired by pieces of those mules. And it's happened in various other incidences as well, like the acne, better sight jacket. And you could almost say that in itself is devaluing the luxury fashion houses brands. So I don't know if it's necessarily just the fakes industry that is causing the problem, of which it definitely is a part of it, but also there is a whole industry of inspired buys and dupes. So you would kind of also have to need to get rid of them as well. In a world where creativity is so sparse at this moment, we should definitely be giving credit where credit's due. And that's credit is basically your spending power. And this is very difficult in today's world where, you know, there's only so many original ideas that you can have. So it would be almost impossible to, for you to eradicate the inspired by market you could eradicate or you could criminalize fakes like paris has done i mean france as a whole has done but there will always be that undercurrent of you know like a cheaper alternative that in itself is a bit of a predicament for luxury brands they will always have competitors who are going to undercut them i just thought i'd mention those points because i think they may add a bit of color around it's not just so simple to be like no fakes, only authentics, because there's a whole gray area in between of, you know, an industry where there's brands that just literally, I guess, copy, um, you could say inspired by, but it's essentially copying what an original brand has done. Recently, I've noticed Valentino, their bags are very, very, very similar to the Hermes bags, the Constance, the Kelly as well. And now it's like a luxury house copying another luxury fashion house. It's not even like a pretty little thing copies Hermes, but these are both luxury fashion houses. They're both expensive, albeit one is a bit less than the other, but that just goes to show you originality is very, very limited or they're picking classic silhouettes that are successful. It's a real, gray area then and i'd love to hear your guys' perspective on it like do you think valentino copying hermes then is almost a fake in itself and what about you know custom sneakers you know i like to design my own sneakers right now but i know there's an industry of people doing those cool lv sneakers or collaboration sneakers and they look really cool is that also a fake then all of these kind of gray areas they all affect the luxury fashion house who originated a product. So it's not just the fakes industry that is affecting it. And so it's a much broader issue that I'm not sure that we're able to curtail. I think it's probably worth mentioning, you know, at this stage, when you have so much inspired by and dupes and things like that, what actually makes an item authentic, potentially, I think we're getting kind of existential here. So hear me out on this one, this Supreme bag, is made in China, like the original. It has exactly the same design as the original. What about it then doesn't make it actually supreme? You know, like, couldn't you say this is actually a supreme bag if all the conditions are almost the same? Apart from the price, okay, maybe some of the packaging, what makes it not supreme? Obviously people would say, the shopping experience, which obviously you cannot replicate the shopping experience of, for example, buying a Chanel bag. I feel like luxury is not just buying the item, it's the whole build up to getting there. But then objectively, if these two items are the same, there's no way of people telling otherwise that it's fake, right? Another point I think people will probably raise is, Mel, why don't you just bin these items? Why do you have them? Aren't you, you know, aren't you embarrassed? I mean, definitely for sure this Chanel bag, I would be kind of embarrassed to wear out. But obviously like being embarrassed is very subjective and I would feel embarrassed only purely because of the fact that I have authentic bags. And maybe it's not embarrassment, it might just be like, I get nervous of wearing this. I don't think I'd wear this out necessarily because this is obviously fake, I feel. But I also don't wanna have that awkward conversation being like, it's fake. Cause then people are like, well, why is everything else? I mean, this click clack is real. 
And with this one, I don't think I'd be embarrassed just purely because it's streetwear and it's cheap tat anyway. <laughs> So knowing that full well, I'm actually more comfortable in having this be a, a fake. But in terms of like binning it, I feel like that almost would be worse because then I've actually contributed not just to this um, potentially harmful industry, but also it's not sustainable. And I would also be adding to landfill. So I'd rather wear the living crap out of this stuff, let it fall apart and just not replace them. And you know, some people might say, oh Mel, you're a fraud then, you know, you have all these real bags, but then you have this fake stuff that you're willing to keep. But you know what I say? I would rather have my shirt be fake than my personality be fake, okay? Extend your logic then to, for example, Kim Kardashian and the Kardashian Jenners, who have their whole body full of like needles and surgery and stuff that they vehemently deny, which I hope anyone with a single brain cell knows that they've done stuff. They don't all wake up like that, especially not Kylie, okay? She did not wake up like she did now. And you know, this is not me trying to shame them for wanting to change things about their body. Absolutely not, it's your body. You do what you want with it. Do what makes you happy. But then you could say to masquerade that everything about you is real when it's not. It just doesn't seem very consistent with me that people will talk about fake bags and they all want authentic this, that and the other. But then in other elements of life, they're totally okay with maybe stretching the truth. Isn't that almost like a fake industry in itself? So just to summarize this video with my final thoughts then, I 100% support uh, buying luxury brands from the source, the authentic real deal. And I think people will end up treating their items in kind based on the amount of money that they've spent on it probably. I certainly find that for me. And so this I barely use, barely touch, don't really treat it well. It's covered in dust and crap. Whereas a lot of my items, I baby them like they are children. I mean, some trolls out there like to say, even before this video, that my stuff is fake. You can go ahead and say that. We all know deep down inside if something is real or not. I don't have to present all my authenticity cards to people out there. You know, whether something is real or not, people would always have something to say about me anyway. So if people want to go ahead and say that, you're well within your right to, but also then like, unsubscribe but then also it raises an interesting question around like you know would i judge someone for buying fakes i don't think i would outwardly like shame someone for doing that i mean it's none of my business i think that has to be a responsibility that the individual who buys the item has so finally we are at the end of the video that is just my perspective on the fakes industry i hope you found it interesting please do let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below would love to have that discussion with you and i will see you in my next video